You're listening to Ecto Portal, a journey into the unknown with Anthony Anderson and Verna Wilson. I hope that you are seated comfortably with the light turned down and the curtains drawn. again to another journey into the unexplored, the unexplained Ecto Portal. I'm Anthony Anderson, your host, and I'm here with my co-host, Verna Wilson. And today we have another local story, another cursed location, uh, the infamous Fox Plaza. Now there is a Fox Plaza in Los Angeles, just not to be confused with the Fox Plaza in San Francisco. And that has a history, curses, all kinds of devilishly unfortunate events that surround the building, and we'll talk about that when we do the show. Uh, so what did you what? do this week, Verna? Oh, well, we didn't really do much. We went to the Arenda Theater for um, these for this festival that they had where they had a bunch of um, horror B-movies from the 1950s and 60s, mm -hmm. and, um, and they had a bunch of commercials and... Um, movie ads from the 50s and 60s, including um, films that they used to show to, to school kids, you know, to instruct them on stuff. Oh, no. Yeah. We Instructional didn't... learning films. Oh, those oh, those were funny. I remember yeah. those. God, God, do I remember those. Those were so funny, especially the ones about marijuana back in the... Um... <laughs> yeah. I remember the one where the, there was a bunch of teenagers in the car and they were all clapping, make marijuana legal. This was um, in the 60s. <laughs> we saw that in school. And isn't it funny, but now it's legal in a lot of states, so I guess their dream came true. Well, sort of legal. Sort of legal, yeah. yeah. It's illegal in a lot of places now. But anyway, um, we didn't get to the whole festival because um, we had some family, because um, my boyfriend had some family stuff to take care of. So um, we actually ended up coming to the last part of it, and we saw the blob. Uh, with Steve McQueen on this on live screen on the screen, it's so different watching it on the screen than it is actually on um, TV or something. On TV, yeah. And I used to, and I was thinking, gosh, I you know I saw the Blob on TV maybe a few times, but I never watched the whole thing. I would just see it and I would just kind of roll my eyes, thinking, oh, they're all scared of this thing that's out, this thing that's floating, you know, to come get them. So I just used to laugh at it and never really watch it. Mm -hmm. So. Watching the whole thing on the screen made me realize this is really a good movie, and, and Steve, they're all Steve McQueen's a good actor. I mean, it was yeah. really well done, actually. It's pretty good. I like the remake from the mid '80s too. I the, never saw that movie. one. It's actually pretty good. Yeah. It's a little more gory, obviously, because it's later in time, but uh, it's just as good. I think it's just different. They kind of do their own thing with it. They yeah. Take the premise. Yeah. So. So um, anyway, um, yeah, it was it was really good. Uh, we really enjoyed it, and um, so we had a lot of fun. And then we we were going for ice we were going for ice cream afterwards. And one of the things I wanted to mention about this incident that happened, um, we went to go see the movie, was when we were walking on the way to the theater. Uh, there's like a shopping there's a shopping plaza, and there's a vintage toy train that um where, where you, that says santa fe express where you put coins in there and the kid rides on it you know those um, those mechanical apartment stores and supermarkets yeah yeah the mechanical so um for some reason my uh my boyfriend was telling me he said he said let me take a picture of you next to the train i said okay i've never 
I wasn't expecting You're to take like, a picture. Why? Okay. <laughs> uh, no, I didn't. I wasn't really saying why. I just thought, of, oh yeah, that would be cute, you know. Yeah. But anyway, I took the picture, and it was a fun picture. It was a cute picture. So after the theater, we were walking back because there was there's an ice cream store not so far, and we walked past the train, and then all of a sudden we heard a two like a whistle, and we stopped, and Greg's and my and my boyfriend said, "Wait a minute." That train just whistled. And he said, did you hear that? I said, I heard it. You know, like the train, they go choo-choo, mm -hmm. the whistle sound. And he said, and right when we walked past it, and it was so loud. I mean, you, you couldn't have missed it. And there wasn't anything else on the street, a car? No, no. Nothing like that? The, no, because the, the plaza, the shopping center was closing, oh. and all ha and all the shops were closed by oh, then. So no it was really it was around. after 10 o'clock. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it was after 9 o'clock, actually, gotcha. going towards 10, and the shops aren't open. So we were looking around, and I said, does, it, does this thing do that? And he said, no. He said, I must have walked past it a million times and never seen anything, never heard anything like that. Yeah. Because it's like one of those vintage trains where you just put the coin in yeah. and... It go and you know it goes back Hydraulically and forth. Hydraulically moves. Yeah, but it's not sophisticated it. enough to do the little train noises. So we don't know why we heard that, but we just it's a haunted train ride, folks. Exactly, Arinda. it was haunted something. So we we were still a little weirded out by it. We went to go to our ice cream. We still talked about it, and he's you know he he's he lives in the area, so he's seen that train for years. He's never. We're just going to do an in-depth three-hour investigation of this ride. Of a toy train, yeah, <laughs> sure. But um, anyway, it was weird. We don't know why it happened, but that's what happened. That is bizarre. Yeah. Yeah, I would definitely ask the store owner if it ever had a sound. You know what I mean? Yeah. If, if they know that if it did or it didn't, or if it's never had a sound, that's even weirder. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. But if it did have a sound, it's still weird. It's just... Why, after all these years, did it just decide to happen? Was there no wind? No wind going on? Nothing. Yeah, no. see, that's, that's weird. I would and, ask, And though. to make it sound like a real train whistle? I mean, yeah. I don't... I, I would don't. ask, though, just out of curiosity. We, we might. I mean, I'm, you know, next time we're, we're walking by there, we might, if, if the store is open. Yeah. So, that's we'll bizarre. see what happens. Yeah. So, what, what's, what, so what's with you? Uh, not... Not a lot of exciting things, just working on my book still. I'm about halfway right now. Uh, and along the way, I gather stuff for a second book. But the first book, which is about San Francisco, I'm about halfway through. So I'm like, every time I go somewhere, including on the way here today, mm -hmm. I had to take pictures of certain locations that are going to be in the book. Mm -hmm. Like today's show is actually going to be in my book. So I've already taken pictures and photographs of that. So I had to take pictures on the way here of another location for another part coming up that I'm writing in the book, too. So I like to have as many current photos mm -hmm. as I can just yeah. to show people a representation of what it looks like of course, now. Of course. That's, that's a great idea. Um, and sometimes I can put pictures where I can, you can comparatively see, you know, 50, 60, 70 years ago and now. So, um, so yeah, that's it's not exciting, but it's a lot of little things you have to worry about. It's what makes um, a good a good piece of work, a good research and good work. And also, you you have to realize that the people who are going to be reading that book have probably never been to the area, so they're going to be walking yeah. past those places. So it's good to see what the place looks like now. Yeah, and there's and I found in doing research for a book, it's interesting because you're going to find a lot of other like paranormal books that have been written over the last 60, 70 years. And they go a few different decades. And some of them will include the stories from the previous person's book that was published years before theirs. Mm -hmm. And some people drop certain things. Mm -hmm. Some people add their own stories. And they drop older ones or they cut down the stories of the older original story. I have gone back and I'm like taking the full version of every story and then updating it, adding stuff that I have onto the end of mm -hmm. it if I have it. Sure. But I'm trying to bring it full circle and include all the details of all the stories and not just a little blurb because i think if you're going to focus on a story and include it in a book you really should do the research and include the whole history so i agree i, I completely agree it just takes a long time because i find one thing and i go down a rabbit hole and i find out a whole bunch more stuff i never knew so this happens well that's that's actually the beauty of writing that of, of what you're writing because sometimes i'll read 
a book on the history of a place and mm -hmm. I'll think, oh, I've read that before yeah. or, or yes, I know all about that. And, you know, and it's not that it's not well written. It is, but yeah. they don't include anything new. So the fact that you're including extra things about the place that we didn't yeah. know about really yeah. shows um, some great, some good work there. Well, in some cases, like your story or when if you were, where we were investigating a different place, I will include those things, like results we had, oh, right, our findings, right. our evidence, yeah. photographs. Right. Because um, sometimes you can't get access again. People aren't, they flip them, someone buys it out, nobody's allowed in again. We could be the last ones for some of these places that get a chance to do this. So. Right, or, or sometimes, um, believe it or not, people, um, the people who run the place or who, who knows about the place will see, that, will see something's written about it, yeah. and they'll think, oh... We're not giving access to that anymore, and they'll they'll access a certain area. They'll block a certain area, or they'll just have no access, yeah, which is the, which is kind of sad because during COVID, there's a lot of places, a lot of hotels and stuff that went out of business, restaurants that I knew that were old and had stories, and I did my best to reach out and contact these because usually they're held by realtor right. holding companies. Yeah, they've already the original owner already got out. They want to sell it, put it right. on the market. But it's COVID, so nobody's buying and nobody's doing anything. Yeah. So, like the, uh, what's it called? The Sir flight. Francis Drake. Oh, the Sir Francis Powell. Drake. That was oh yeah, I yeah. Was we really we, we were thinking, that. we were talking about that one a while back. I'd, yeah. Over and over, I tried to get in there during COVID, and and I just never got a response. And now it's open as a different hotel name. It's a different company. They've kind of whitewashed all the Sir Francis Drake history and turned it into something else, which is really sad. It is sad, but I may include that in my book because there is stories connected to the the uh, hotel. And there's also the Palace Hotel, and, and that one hasn't changed uh, their well, they, name or or they still have all the historical items and they're open. Well, I know, but it was two hotels. The original hotel was mostly demolished. There was stuff they saved, like the garden. Yeah, room, they did. Yeah, and then they built a new hotel around it. Sort right. Of. Yeah. So they both have. They're both old enough. They both have histories and, and incidents. So yeah, that would definitely be one. There's so many places in this city that man, my book would be two thousand pages if I waited and included everything. <laughs> and the good, the good part about COVID being over is that a lot of buildings and places are opening up again. Yeah. So the places. So I know you and I thought of a few places. So if there's a few places we were planning to go back, maybe we're able to do it now. Maybe. To let us in. It's, if they'll let us I in. I found it with San Francisco, it isn't just, hey, can I get in and investigate? Right. You got to engage them, interest them. Right. Because if they're not interested, forget it. Mm -hmm. But if there's a little bit of curiosity and interest, and I found out you can't just ask once, you literally have to dog it and keep asking until they just say yes. Yes. Just to say, okay, they really want to do this. Let's just let them do this and get over with. Or they're curious and they want to do it. So. Right. So a little more work in San Francisco. People aren't so quick to open their doors and let you investigate. Right. But yeah, so that's what I've been working on lately. But it's, you know, like I said, it's fun. I learn new stuff, possible new show topics. You never know. Yes. So it's good. Yeah. All right. So uh, let's do the paranormal news. Welcome to the Paranormal News. Uh, this week, I uh, got one of a traditional type. I don't know if I 900% believe this particular incident or article, but you know what? What the heck? Uh, doorbell camera was recently captured. Uh, two men in black visiting somebody's home. Um, they weren't actually there, but if you know most uh, uh, doorbell cameras, they're connected to people's smartphones. Even if they're at work, they can see who's knocking at their door. They just click the icon and it shows them their, all their cameras in their house. Well, this was two guys in suits, wearing dark sunglasses, and they're ringing the doorbell. Excess, they're knocking on the door. Sorry, they're knocking on the door. And that one guy's standing kind of in the back by the porch, and another guy's standing in the foreground. And between them is this weird object that's sort of floating in the air behind them, like in the sky. And people are like, oh, is that a UFO? Is, are these men in black? Now, they each had briefcases, so I've, I've never seen, I don't know, I haven't seen a, a Men in Black pictures or anything where they're carrying briefcases, but I guess there must be some, but uh, they just kept 
one guy kept knocking on the door, and they, people say it's a UFO. Like I said, floating between them. You'll be able to see it. There's a video clip, um, and I'll post it to our uh, Ecto Portal page, and you can actually see it. Um, I don't entirely buy that. I guess a woman's children te text. She texted her kids, said, "Do you know who these people are?" And they didn't know. And they linger and linger, and then they eventually just take off. But I don't know. They just, people just think it's weird because there's a UFO in the background. But usually, you, men in black show up after a UFO sighting in the area, or someone has an experience or connection or sees something. Then the men in black show up. But the men in black show up and the UFO is in the same shot. That's a little weird. I've yeah, I've never heard it that way either. But, you know, what I wonder, I have my own Men in Black story, by the way. But well, let me finish this. Yeah, I know, no, no. I'm not going to not gonna tell, tell it right away. You already, she already told us that story. I told that story a long time ago. I'm not going to, I'm not going to talk about it again. But this was but in California. This woman was in California. It's interesting there's in California. But yep. it's interesting how they always look the same. Well, these guys, that's, what's, that's what I wanted to say. These guys don't look anything alike, really. One's shorter than the other. They don't act like men in black they don't have that rigid yeah and, and, about and in them. my story they didn't look they, they they looked almost a stereotype but not quite but yeah but that's um but it's it's interesting california i just think they wanted to give them the uh D does it say what part of california it happened? no it didn't say it didn't say people they probably want their privacy whoever it happened to i think they just wanted to give somebody the watchtower <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, I think they were probably a religious organization that was going door to door. That's what I think. So they look pale and and. Well, no, you can't even tell that on the doorbell camera. It's just well, no, I have I've never seen a I've never seen. Um, but they a... talk to each other, which I know when people talk about Men in Black, they're not always talking to each other. Oh, that's interesting. These okay. two actually have a few words to each other, and it didn't sound like English. Yeah. But you couldn't really tell what nationality they were. They both wore the sunglasses. The, the suits didn't look completely identical. So, you know, they always say men in black are always dressed from, like suits from almost like another time, like the 40s or yeah, 50s. Yeah, yeah, right. A little outdated, I've heard that too, yeah. But not enough to really stand up, but enough to go, why are they dressed so weirdly? And they always look paler than normal. Yeah. I've never I've never heard of somebody talking about men in black looking healthy and <laughs> yeah. vibrant. Yeah. Energetic is not a word you would usually hear. But aggressive. You've heard of men in black being aggressive with. People. I've heard of, I've heard of them being pushy. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I just watch the video and you'll see. Yep. Now, what what would be your theory of why they would show up and what would they be pushy about? Well, you said usually a men in, men in black show up after someone has had a sighting or an experience with a UFO. And what what good's that going to do? Why? We'll show up to find out what do you know? What did you see? Don't tell anyone what you saw. The people have been aggressively uh, threatened after the people show up at the door and they do that. That's what the oh, men in black okay. do. Oh, okay. The men in black are basically the cleanup guys. Because it's it's funny though because if you act that way, people aren't going to tell you what they saw, or they're not going to be, or they're just going to avoid well, you. Well, if they but... lie and say they're from the government, they're going to you know, do something to you, or they're going to make sure you, you yeah. suffer if you don't tell them. Yeah. They, it happens. Yeah. And people get like, they don't know what to do. They just tell them what they saw. And they say, don't ever tell anybody ever again. Don't ever mention it again. Don't ever tell anybody you saw anything. Um, that happens. Sometimes people disappear. You'll read about articles about yeah. people disappearing. Yeah, that's so. true. Yeah. So uh, I just, I don't know. I watched it. I'm not convinced it's men in black. They just don't, they seem too more, too individual to me. Well, you know, um, there could be, they could have different types of groups of men in black, not mm -hmm. necessarily the same one, and they all operate differently. I don't know. We, we don't know. But it's kind of weird that it happened right right after. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, take a look at that video. It's, it's interesting. So what have you got? Well, I have one about um, a couple of people who are um, investigators, and and they're, they're a couple, and they're fighting over prized possessions that they've collected, including a human skeleton, because they're divorcing. They're either divorcing or breaking up. So they just collect stuff? They just collect stuff, right. And this article was from this, this, this is an article from The Sun. So it's not a business or anything, they just like to collect paranormal stuff? Well, I guess they made it as part of their business. They're, 
There are a couple of investigators and they're locked in a custody battle over their possessions. And one of them is named Lee Steer, he's 37. He walked out on his wife, Lindsay, who's 53, after they spent seven years touring Britain's most haunted sites. So um, they won millions of online followers, they wrote books, they collected possessed items from all over the world. And, um, and after their marriage broke down um, earlier, um, after their marriage broke down, they're fighting over items which include um, dolls, paintings, and a, and a human skeleton. And their pieces actually were on display at their museum in um, Rotherham, Rotherham, South York's, which has since shut down. The museum shut down since then. So um, Lee has taken the three, the three haunted dolls, Annabelle, Elizabeth, and Scarlet, and um, he forced Lizzie to get Lindsay to get the locks changed. And Lindsay said, these things in there may not be worth money, but they're very precious to me. She said, we got things from all over the world, things that people send us, whether it's a tiny stone or a huge item. I really cherish everything. And they met in, two, in late 2016 and they ran Project Revealed Ghosts of Britain. And they have over more than 2 million followers on Facebook. So if you want to look them up on Facebook, that's where they are. And uh, since they've split up, uh, Lindsay has accused Lee of ghosting her. And she said, I've tried... Uh -huh, no pun intended. No pun intended, right. <laughs> she said, I've tried many times to have a conversation with him, but he ignores my texts. I sent him messages on messengers. He blocked me. I had no communication. It's like he, written me, he wrote me off altogether. She said, I wasn't the reason my marriage broke down. It was a shock when he walked out on me with no explanation. So um, Lee, who's been ghost hunting for 25 years, said, we split up and all my ghost hunting equipment was taken from me. I thought if I couldn't access the equipment, I wanted to take the dolls. I wanted what's mine. So it's, it's very sad that a marriage breakup is causing a lot of problems that could have been avoided. So um, there's so um, she said, hopefully things will work out in the future in, in, in terms of who has what, they're priceless items to me. So it sounds like they're just... Well, it's not to be confused. Now I'm glad you, you actually gave all the facts because I kept thinking it was the married couple that has the traveling haunted object museum in, in the U.S. Different, different oh, no, couple. Oh, no, 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 Entirely different. Entirely different couple. So but I, li is... I don't know. I don't even know about that couple. That, that, that's yeah, yeah, we were going to do a show at one point. Oh, right, they travel, okay. They go to conferences and they bring them oh, the Oh, yeah, yeah, we, you talked about them, yeah. yeah. So I'm glad it's not them. Then. So that's interesting, right? I don't even know how a court would decide who gets what. I guess it would be monetary. Like, you keep everything, you figure out half of what it's all worth financially, split, tell me, split that in half, that's what you have to pay her. Yeah. If you want to keep everything. Otherwise, you guys got to sit here and divvy this up. That's, that, that, that sounds like the reasonable thing to do to me. I mean... Yeah. You give me the, the monetary compensation for half, or we split it up. And I, I do realize that paranormal equipment is very expensive. Yeah. But, <laughs> you know, they, I mean, maybe split the equipment, split the items. Yeah, that's all, that's all you could do is split it or financially find out its actual worth and just have one person keep it and pay the other person. So the human skeleton, that... We have strict laws in the U.S. I don't know what they're. Yeah, laws I don't are. know. That's a little. That that's mm, here. Here, I guess they call it grandfathered, where the skeleton's so old they don't really know who it is, and they they allow them. But any you can't obtain a new skeleton, human skeleton no. from anybody. It's illegal. Yeah, I I, it, I was a little surprised when I read that. I thought, how do they manage that? Well, in England, there's probably a better chance of getting a human skeleton than you. That's you gotta yeah. admit, it's a lot older. Yeah. I so don't, I don't know where he would go. Where would you go? I where, guess where would you go? A graveyard, and, I guess. And that's why probably would you, what, and why would you keep it? Is what I wonder. Well, if they went to a graveyard, I'm sure that's what they want to avoid. There's <laughs> people digging up graves to get. Yes, skeletons. exactly. So. Ugh. So anyway, it sounds like a mess, and. Yeah. Um, I don't know how that's going to turn out. Maybe we'll find out later. Maybe we'll find out later. I actually thought about bringing one of them on the show because I'm sure they have a lot of interesting stories. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't know how much they'd want to talk about. Yeah. Beyond 
you know, about the split and all that stuff. Well, maybe we won't bring that up, but we'll, but we could always bring up the museum, their items, what yeah. the, some of the investigations they did. Maybe one of those with such a bitter memory now, they may not want to talk about any. Yeah, that's you never true. Know. You never, well, have to, you know what? I you'd have to contact them and kind of just feel them out a little bit. Right. And, yeah. Maybe look up their Facebook page and see yeah. um, what their posts say and yep. take it from there. Yeah. Yep. Sounds good. All right. That's Paranormal News, folks. They're coming to get you, Barbara. Stop it! You're ignorant! They're coming for you, Barbara. Stop it! You're acting like a child! They're coming for you! Look! There comes one of them now! All right, today's show is another local story, like I mentioned before. Um, we both know generalized things about this story, I think. Um, in the 1929, Fox Studio, in this case William Fox, built a 1929 movie palace, and it literally takes up one solid block on Market Street in all directions, so all the way around it, one whole block. Gig biggest movie palace on the West Coast, and there was actually two others, like in Brooklyn and I think New Jersey, that were at sister theaters built the same way. Those still exist. Hmm. But this particular one was built in 1929 by William Fox of the Fox Film Corporation. Uh, there, oh, sorry, there were five of them built in the 20s. The other was our Brooklyn, Atlanta, Detroit, and St. Louis. And I know that the Brooklyn and the Jersey one are still around. I don't know. No, Fox Atlanta is still there. I do know that. I don't know about Detroit or St. Louis. But they're massive. They look like... It's funny, when I go to palaces in England and Germany, it looks like a palace. It's just that big, and it's that ornate, gold ornate statues. Fox Plaza here isn't even that... No, but the theater that used to be there is that entire block. right. So the Fox Plaza, and then there's that smaller plaza below it with Starbucks, the post office. Yeah. That whole thing was one giant movie theater, the whole block. And it was massive, and it was there for a long, long time. Uh, It premiered, like I said, in in June of 29. The first movie was Behind That Curtain, which was a Charlie Chan movie. Huh. Um, the theater actually had to close in October 20th, 1932, so that's only like five years later. And it was closed until April 1st, 1933, due to financial difficulties. So, oh, okay. even five years in, this massive cathedral theater movie house, it only showed one, one movie, and it had like 4,500 seats. So if you can't keep fill forty five hundred seats, this is during the twenties. This is during the depression. When movies were fairly new and people were really going to them all the but time. During the depression and after the this is actually so though in twenty nine the depression was was still going on. Yeah, that's ending. true. Uh, but we're going into the thirties, and you know I guess unless you fill the place, you're not going to. I can't even imagine how much it would cost to keep a theater that large. Right, clean I can staffed. imagine. I mean, the cleaning staff alone it takes money. Yeah, yeah. And the staff, to, the ushers, the cashiers, the concession—you know, everything. There's Pe- just a lot of people. People were struggling. They probably just didn't have money to see movies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So during that October 20, 1932 to October first, nineteen thirty-three. So that was about six, seven months. They just had to close because they couldn't financially stay open. So yeah. attendance declined, revenue declined, and it's been an issue since the, the end of World War II, but became more pronounced by the late 50s with the invention of television. Mm-hmm. People could go home and watch movies, so why would you go to this massive movie palace to see one movie mm-hmm. when you could watch TV and flip the channel and see all that's three what, of the channels? But that was probably a, a pretty big mindset when TV... Was, was becoming popular, yep. yeah. So with the expansion of television in the 50s, the question that the city and the county of San Francisco was buying the Fox Theater and its land, so they put it before a vote. Mm-hmm. They actually asked the, the registered voters of the city, 
on November 7, 1961 is Proposition 1, requiring only a simple majority, and it was overwhelmingly defeated with a no vote of 59.2%. So on February 16, 63, that's it. Theater shut down. Everybody was fired. Everybody closed up. Uh, Kind of sad. It is sad. In fact, the night, there was a farewell to Fox Benefit concert featuring a lot, a lot of Hollywood actors and theater performers whose movies ran there, who did live shows there. Yeah, because people love their movies. Yep, Jane Russell, Tiny James, longtime Fox Theater, Everett Forbes. Oh, man. Uh, um, they had, I actually saw a clip the other day when they actually had clips of the concert, and they show Hedda Hopper at the microphone cool. talking about the theater and its history, how sad it was that it was being torn down. So it, it, it's kind of sad, but, but it's interesting when you watch the clips, because then you can see clips of, you know, the theater being demolished. There's p- pictures on the internet of these giant wrecking balls. It hurts my heart to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, I bet you anything people voted because there were plenty of old theaters in San Francisco, and they probably, mm-hmm. what's one more, right? But exactly. now I bet people wish they would have kept it. Well, I mean... Uh, that's the problem is it just takes so much money to keep it going. But yeah. Unless you have the money. It's yeah. Real estate. Think of all the theaters that got chopped up into multiplexes. That's true. Some of them survived. Some of them were eventually tore down. But yeah. Even here, there was, you know, the Coronado. There was a lot of I theaters know. here in town that oh, eventually sure. got all, pretty much demolished or gutted. Right. Like the um, El Capitan, the Mission, which was the sister theater of the El Capitan in Hollywood. Yes. Same exact design and, it, and manufacturing. They kept the facade, gutted the theater, and turned it into a parking lot. Right. Which is really sad when you walk by it because you can see how great the theater was. I know, yeah. So anyway, this giant theater, um, they have turned it down, voted no, was demolished in July of 63. Now, on this same site, which they now call Fox Plaza, now you know where it gets its name. It's an mm-hmm. homage to this beautiful theater that's been now demolished so we'll call this street fox plaza uh they built a high-rise mark high-rise building with offices and apartments and like i said there is one in los angeles but this is a different fox plaza mm-hmm. uh the war the world's organ that was salvaged from the theater was installed uh in the frank j lannerman estate in la canada flintridge california and the large uh, four-manual, 36-rank organ was bought by the Disney Company. And guess where that organ from the Fox Theater now is? Where? The El Capitan in Hollywood. That's interesting. So that's where their organ came from, is from our Fox Theater here in San Francisco. I loved I loved it when those old theaters had had the organs oh, yeah. to play. That, like that was the Castro best. Theater is like the last one that still has Yeah, them. that's so cool to listen to. Yeah. So this giant Fox Plaza building, and I... I Personally, I think it looks like a headstone. <laughs> like a giant headstone of where the theater used to be. That's a good that's like a good a way grave to put site. it. I can't stand that place. It is ugly. And it, and it looms over Civic Center. And uh, in the apartments above, you can see different curtains from different windows. It has a war-torn look. It's very, like, cement. It's concrete. It's very gloomy. Yes, yes. Uh, Mid-1990s. Um... It's a 29-story building, has a mixed use. Residents uh, live there, but there's been a lot of tragedy considering the actual building itself. And this is an actual tweet from somebody who knew more about the, th- the building itself. This was actually from November 6, 2013. Uh, Marcus Wilson, a reporter from the Associated Press from 2006 to 2012, Concurred AP Bureau was there three years there three years years ago. Bodies a regular feature then too. He replied, "The ugliness of Fox Plaza stands on the site of what was the forty six hundred fifty one seat Fox Theater. Um, was once the largest movie theater west of Chicago. According to Urban Legend, Church of Satan founder Anton Lavey, who played the organ at the Fox mm-hmm. on a regular basis, he was an organ player for them." Which huh. makes sense with some of the articles I did on him and found. He he was an organist in different theaters in California. Huh. Uh, during during its final show on Saturday, February 17, 1963, he was the organist. 
Uh, three years before he declared Satanus the first year of the reign of Satan in 1966, as LeVay struck the last chord that ever echoed through the Ford Theater auditorium, he reportedly cursed whatever building would be pl- replace his beloved cinema. Wow. A gold wrecking ball wrapped in tassels from the Fox's oversized stage curtain slammed into the theater's west wall 11 days later. The curse appeared to take effect before the new Fox Plaza building was even completed. A five-ton crane collapsed and hurtled through the metal skeleton of the upper floors on July 20th, 1965. One man's legs were crushed under the crane's five-ton mast. Ouch. Four others were injured. Now, LeVay proclaimed the reign of Satan as April 30, 1966, gave way to May 1st. Fox Plaza opened without a, without incident a day later on May 2nd. Now, the suicides in the high-rise started the following year when 49-year-old William uh, Dir- Dederer sorry, shot himself in his girlfriend's 26th floor apartment in March 1967. Ouch. The tragedies continued into the next decade when an epileptic man jumped 22 stories to his death on September 4, 1971. A 45-year-old cabbie shot himself in the face with a skeet gun in his apartment and crawled off his 14-story balcony on February 15, 1972. Now, other accidental deaths and suicides have been reported over uh, ever since. Not all the tragedies connected to the Fox Plaza have been... Uh, self-inflicted. In other words, other people have had a hand. Uh, one fire truck came uh, as there was a small waste basket fire in the building. They jumped the curb on Marcus Street and Taylor on December 5, 1975 and killed three people at a crowded Muni stop. Ouch! A sniper rained down bullets on the plaza in 1979 while decades of death falls from the plaza may confirm the rumor of LeVay's curse. The Fox was a troubled enterprise even back when it was in its theater glory days, like we mentioned when it had to close for a while. Less than a month after William Fox opened the Theater of Dreams in July, uh, June 29, the movie studio magnet was severely injured in a car accident and killed his chauffeur. Fox was kept alive by a blood transfusion from J. Carroll Nash, a character actor who later played a murderous hunchback in House of Frankenstein. The theater hit hard times after the stock market of a crash of 29, closed for six months, and then reopened. Um, the Fox was the scene of several holdups, a suicide, a deadly accident. Two ushers stepped into an empty elevator shaft. The cause of the building's history of suicides may have more to do with unfettered balcony access than the supernatural and death curses, uh, but it's actually unclear if LeVay really played the organ during the Fox's farewell. I did find a book that said he did, but then I found another article online that said someone else was playing the organ that night. So I think it could be folklore that he was, it just sounds more dramatic saying, and Tom was the last one to play the organ before he cursed It could just be folklore. It could be. Maybe they had a series of people playing the organ that night. They could, they could have, You know, like a concert. If it was was a long concert, he could have been one of them, but not all of them. Yeah. But... When when you're done with the, when you're done talking about it, yeah, I'll tell you my feelings about yeah. Fox Plaza. So, uh, like I said, it's unclear whether he actually played the farewell. Uh, according to a 2000 Chronicle obituary, Everett Norse was the organist for the Fox, where he delighted audiences until it closed in '63. Um, but one can argue the construction of it obviously marks the beginning of a colder, violent crime. Now, here's another person in August of 2009. So we'll flash. I'm trying to give a chronological here. Sure. Uh, someone said, oh dear, didn't hear about this one until today. Forgive the delay. A woman fell from an apartment balcony at Fox Plaza, affectionately known as the Crystal Tower. To, um, according to reports, the woman fell from a very high floor of the 29th store building. Um, she crash landed on Polk Street between Market and Hayes. Ouch. The, the identified woman was taken to the hospital with severe gash on the top of her head. Uh, no word yet why or how she fell from the balcony. Fox Plaza obviously sits on the former side of the theater. Now, in 2022, it gets better. San Francisco police named the possible sixth victim of the Doodler serial killer who targeted gay men. Um, San Francisco police named the possible Doodler serial killer. A man was beaten to death in 1975 and has been identified as the possible sixth victim of the largely forgotten serial killer, uh, 
who targeted gay white men in San Francisco between 74 and 76. The killer is known by police as the doodler, so because he took, told the surviving victim he was studying to be a cartoonist, according to San Francisco police. Detectives allege that the killer drew his victims in, literally with sketches of them he'd draw on cocktail napkins. They believe he lured them into secluded areas for sexual hookups, slashed and battered their bodies, and they were bodies were discovered the following morning. So, what a creep. Yeah. At the time of the murders, the suspect killer was described as a black man between 19 and 25, with a medium complexion and smooth skin. He was between 5 feet 11 inches and 6 feet tall, kind of lanky. They said the killer is believed to be responsible for at least five murders, but they could have killed as many as 14 or 15 men. On Thursday, the anniversary of the first murder attributed to a cold case, investigators doubled down to reward. Six men was added to the list. Uh, he was beaten to death with a rock in a tree branch. Um, Andrews was found April 27, 1975, beneath some overhanging brush at Land's End uh, Park, obviously near the um, Sutra Baths. Uh... Andrews, who lingered for seven weeks before dying of his injuries, was first considered a, do a potential doodler victim last year when reporters at the San Francisco Chronicle, uh, with help from the cold case detectives, took a fresh look at the case. And the reason I mention this is because one of the first victims lived in the Fox Tower, and he went into the guy's apartment at Fox Tower with him. But how, how was he able to lure him, show a napkin, oh, I can, I, I can draw you, and then he lures him into his apartment? For sex. Oh, and then they might have gone somewhere else, and he killed him, but he went back to his apartment because the guy lived at Fox oh, Tower. Oh, wow, okay. So, again, it all ties back to Fox Tower. Suicides, deaths, elevator deaths for the theater, the curse. So it has an and interesting you know, history to the place. And, you know, it's, it's, it's in a very um, busy side of, of San Francisco, oh, near a civic center, where there's a lot of chaos and negative stuff around there. Yeah, there's a lot of homeless and just, and just violence. Just lots of it. Yeah. And, you know, I I hate Fox Plaza. And one of the reasons I hate Fox Plaza was because I used to have to go work and go to BART every single day. And some, you know how sometimes, um, like back in the 80s, well, I don't know if you were here in San Francisco back in the 80s, but they had... They had a coffee shop and they had like a store, a little store in the bottom where you can buy things, you know. Mm -hmm. And I sometimes I had to, this was when Bart took cash rather than a clipper card. Yeah. You, when you would put cash in. Yep. And sometimes I had to go get change and I didn't know, and I had to get extra change. And I used to have to go inside one of the stores and it was the early morning to get change. Yeah. And the clerks were so grouchy. I mean, they were. Where did you go though to get the change? Do you remember? It was Fox Plaza, but it was one of the stores. I, I don't remember which store it See, was. See, now it's just Starbucks and the post office. Maybe it was other stores. It was another store back then. Gotcha. Yeah. I, I think the post office was there back then, but I'm not really sure. But they, they had a coffee shop and they had a little store. Mm -hmm. And um, so um, anyway, the. The clerks was always such a grouch, and every time I had to ask for change, and you know, I would buy something like gum, or you know, buy a little something, yeah. and then I would ask, you know, can you give me change and such and such, and they would be like, oh, you know, and I would be like, and I knew it was early in the morning before a lot of customers, they didn't have a lot of it, but I didn't do it all the time. So anyway, they were grumpy, and and I, th I and I used to sometimes I would buy some coffee in the morning to take with me, and I would think. Jeez, what a bunch of grouchos in this place! In this place, every time I go to the shopping center, people are grouchy. Um, yeah, but back to the plaza. Back to that's what I meant. It was it's a, it was in Fox Plaza. Um, yeah, I did read that during COVID and even recently, they had window panes just fall out onto the streets below. Window panes. Yeah, the window was so it would rattle the windows and they would literally fall out of the, the frames. Well, doesn't that mean that they had to repair the building or, yeah. you know, they need to do repairs? Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. That was during COVID. And also they said during COVID that the city was housing inmates that get out of prison. You know, they have that program that's to, to rehabilitate yourself into light. Into yeah. Uh -huh. They would house them in, in the Fox Plaza. That's interesting. So there was like drug addicts that got out of drug rehab. There was former inmates. They said the place, one person said she lived, she lived on one of the floors. And she said there was a few people on the floor when she lived there. This was, in, I don't know, I would say 2012. She said a woman on her floor died, but they didn't find her for like five or six days until Ooh. they could smell her. Oh my gosh. So that means that 
she do, she wasn't in contact with anybody. No. Yeah. So the, the, all the tenants like, what is that awful smell? And then they found her body, but they said the smell just lingered for months and months. And they had to repaint. And so, well, interestingly enough, a company came in recently, and they called it the Crystal Towers now or something. Uh -huh. They flipped the place. They evicted as many as they could. They got rid of everybody that they could get out of there. Uh huh. Uh, and they flipped it. They call it the Crystal Tower now. You can go and see the, the rentals online. I went and looked at them. The apartments inside look nice, but I'm sorry. That place is so ugly on the outside. And they put these big blue lights at night. And they try to I, make I've it seen look rental nice. signs for, for that building many times. When I was apartment hunting some years ago, I saw rental signs for them. And they were offering a dis... Well, I mean, it was always a kind of expensive because they say in the middle of busy downtown yeah. San Francisco. But they People were trying the to... the armpit of San Francisco. Well, well they didn't <laughs> say that. Of course not. But, yeah. but th they were trying to make it look attractive and they were trying to offer a good price for it. For, yeah. I mean, it was still expensive, but it was a better price. Do you remember what it was priced at? I don't remember the price, because but now, I just... Because now they price it as 1800 to start for a studio. I think it was 1200 at the time. And yeah, up to 2300 for a one bedroom. I think it's even more than that right. for a two bedroom. Now. And they were saying shops and downtown nearby. They were making it sound yeah. like it's, you know, And it's not. There's no shops down there. Well, of course not, but they but they they mentioned <laughs> Shops nearby. You know. I would be afraid. Every time I left that, if I lived there, I'd be afraid. I'd have to look both directions and mm -hmm. be like, I'm going to go wherever I need to go because I don't want to be downtown, especially at night. I'd be afraid to like go in home. And, I was. I, I would have been weirded out. And But they also mentioned close to transportation, which it is. It's close yeah. to BART. So you but, get hit by a falling window or yeah. maybe a fire truck will like run into you. <laughs> I don't know. So it's, you know, but it's, I, I always wondered why they had such a hard time renting that place but then i realized okay if they went through the through the grouchy things like i did every time i walked by or every time i went there it was, it was always weird energy then i could well, see that's why what i was gonna yeah. say is with all the suicides and all that stuff how much dark energy just lingers in that building right you know and i don't i, w I wouldn't say it's from the movie theater days although the fact that people died in elevator shafts and you never know. I well, mean, it's also because of the area. The area, the, the area, you know, kind of has a weird vibe to it, yeah, anyway. It does, Civic it Center always did. It's funny when I walked. I took when I took pictures of it recently. I walked down the block, and you could feel definitely it's a, it has a different vibe in that block than it does anywhere it, else. It really does. It, I, you know, before you did this, before you you did the subject, I used to think it was just me. Mm -hmm. I used to think. Um, I used. I used to walk by and I would think, ew, I don't like the energy here. But I used to think, ah, oh, it's just me. I, I don't have good memories no, of Fox. Now I realize it's not just me. No, there's, a, yeah. there's something going on there. I, I once thought, oh, if it's cheap enough, I could live there. And I thought, God, it's so ugly. When you look at it, you're like, this is just an ugly-ass building. It looks like a tombstone, like yeah. I said. It's a nice headstone for the former Fox Theater. <laughs> but. It kind of is, yeah, but... You know, no, I mean, I imagine it's, it's haunted. It's all those deaths and all that suicides and anguish and worry and inmates getting out of prison and being helpless. Seeing all that's the drug an, that's addicts enough recovering, to, having no life, having to start over. That's enough to make it funky. Exactly. So to make the energy funky. I would love to know someone who lives there. <laughs> oh, I was lived there just about to say that. Just yeah. to see if there's any paranormal stories in the building. Because there, there's always yeah, going to be if, some. And if you live there and you enjoy it and you have a good experience, then I'm glad for you because we actually need people there who have good experience. Yeah, but if we you actually have, need that. If we you need have more positive stories, around there. Contact yeah. us and we'll put you on the show. Yeah, we'll put you on the show. That would be great. Yeah, I'd be curious though because there's got to be some. There has to be. Oh, I'm sure there's there's people who, I mean, there's probably people who live there who, um, you know, don't know the history and they don't feel anything and they just yeah. enjoy their apartment. Yep. And that's how it should be. But it's been flipped. If you go online, you can see the nice clean insides and compared to the nice ugly outside. <laughs> I I know what they need. What? They need a shaman or or um or somebody, or a, sh a shaman or somebody. To come and do a blessing on the place and dispel any negative... Maybe Tangina from Poltergeist can come in and <laughs> do her thing. No, I mean, I'm talking about a real shaman or or, or even um, yeah. a Native American um, shaman to come in and, and bless the place mm -hmm. 
and just spell all the the negative stuff, but they're not going to do that. But nope. that would be a great idea. Yeah, it's too late now. They've already flipped it and they're renting it. Well, all right. All right, folks. Uh, if you don't want to live in the Fox Plaza, maybe we'll uh, find a place for you to live next week on Ecto Portal. So until then, we'll say goodbye. Bye. Bye. Free, copyright free music by Kevin McLeod and Ross Bugden. Be sure to visit us at www.ectoportal.com. Check out our archives on YouTube and head on over for new episodes to ectoportal.podbean.com. Stop.